Welcome to the Candor and Clarity Show with Leah LeRae. Hey, oh my God, Kendrick. Woo. Okay, listen, when I tell you that I was so, I have been waiting for Kendrick to come back for, I don't even know how long. I kept saying, look, we need some Kendrick Lamar. Where is Kendrick? Where is my guy? And I've been waiting and waiting. And finally, finally, he drops the dope ass, uh, what's, what is this? Uh, the Heart Part 5, okay? And let me tell you, the video is dope. We're gonna we're gonna dive more into that when we get into the for the culture segment. But baby, okay. First things first. <laughs> Welcome back to the Candor and Clarity podcast, y'all. Hello, how are you? It has been quite some time. It's been a minute. I've been gone for a little while, uh, took a little break, and um, it was not intentional at first, <laughs> okay? It was not intentional, but unfortunately, your girl had COVID. Yeah. I had COVID, and it took my ass out for a couple of weeks, okay? Um, which was like, whoa, okay, I was I was knocked into um, submission, so to speak. And, um, having COVID definitely, it awakened me to, um, some things regarding my health. And, um, you don't know how much of a thug you are <laughs> or how, le or how could I wear this? You don't know how weak you are until you've had COVID. Okay. Um, definitely was not fun. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better now. I'm still not 100%. Um, but the worst of it is gone. Thank baby black Jesus because baby. Okay. I'm not going to make this episode about COVID, but let me, but I do want to stress if I have not stressed this enough in other episodes take care of your health our bodies are so amazing and so strong that being able to go through something like covid and experiencing all the different symptoms and and everything that goes along with it i'm f i'm a fairly healthy person you know um i could probably improve in some areas but when I tell you <laughs> that I I think I did shed a couple of tears one day because I was like, oh my God, I couldn't, I, I just can't imagine how someone whose body was not able to withstand the virus, uh, how I, I just my heart goes out to anyone who has lost someone due to covid because it's 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 the real deal okay all i'm gonna say is that i'm better um i thank god for my health the health that i do have and i am even more um eager if i wasn't before i am now okay <laughs> to make sure that uh my health is in order that my body is healthy and strong and so um yeah i will be able to get back to uh teaching some yoga and pilates here uh this week actually uh, tomorrow i'll be filming some uh some classes but i'm just happy to be back on my feet and and have my stamina again because i was in bed and i lost what felt like all of my energy okay now i'm already low on energy <laughs> but um it was it was some shit okay anyway 
I've been going a little while. It's, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, there is a lot to get into because a lot has been happening. Uh, we've got some new music. I've watched some crazy shit while I was down uh, with COVID and, um, you know, just a lot of shit going on in the news. It's been wild, but before we get into the show, I do have some news of my own. Let me go ahead and put on some of this um, <clears throat> feminine energy body oil that was just released. Uh, it's on my website right now, and if you are part of my newsletter, you already got the deets. You got first dibs on it. Uh, there are limited quantities, so make sure that you hop on and get your orders in. But the Feminine Energy Body Oil has frankincense, white tea, cherry blossom, sweet almond, and jojoba oils. Okay, baby, when I tell you this oil, and I'm going to put some on because, um, you know, my hands are a little ashy right now, <laughs> but this oil is, I'm so in love with it. It's, it's just, it makes your skin so smooth. And, um, so this episode is brought to you by Body So Well Health and Beauty. Yes, that is my very own body care line. And so the body oils smell so good. I have two. I have one called Sensual Goddess. Um, and that's more of a kind of a fall type of uh, scent. It's very it's got some nutmeg and vanilla and you know some black orchid other kind of flavors going on but this feminine energy is all about feeling sensual and sexy and fresh like a uh, flower goddess it smells so good and to pair with this i have the nefertiti rollerball oil perfume it smells so good it's got sandalwood, yangling, and rose, okay? And it also has little rose petals inside of the oil. It's a real deal. And um, I just dab a little here. Blends so nicely with the feminine energy body oil. It smells so good. And uh, you'll have like a nice little um, glow when you have on your sundresses and your halter tops and all of that so be sure to go to my website leahlaray.com and uh, place your orders they are now up on the website i ship every tuesday so get y'all orders in and don't miss out all right all right now that that is um out of the way <laughs> um i do not have a new strain of the week honestly i have not even really been smoking that much which is like what you ain't been smoking bitch what you mean um i have not really been smoking i've been smoking here and there just to help kind of uh you know clear out the nasal passages i'm still a, a little um congested but i've got my nice little tea here you know, to help with that and, you know, if if you hear me clear my throat or cough or whatever, I'll try not to do it in the microphone, but hey, you know, it should still in there a little bit. <laughs> but um, I'm still smoking on the, um, I think it was the MK Ultra. That was the last string that I shared with you guys. <clears throat> so that's what we got today. All right. Um, so many current event topics to get into because shit has been wild like people are wilding out so the first topic that topic that i kind of want to um dive into is the passing of kevin samuels now i don't know all of the details i don't think anyone really knows all of the details surrounding um his death 
here's what I do know. I do know that apparently he was with some chick um, in a one bedroom apartment, apparently. Um, I, I personally, my personal opinion now, let me put out the disclaimer because I am not a journalist. Okay, I am one woman on a microphone with a podcast giving my opinion about shit. So don't look to me as your news source. Do your own research, okay? <laughs> I do the research for the show, but do your own research. So um, yes, Kevin Samuels passed a, a few days ago uh, this week. He was 56. I believe, and um, you know, there's a lot of commentary surrounding his death. And and I'll say this, <clears throat> the one thing that really got under my skin was the celebration of of this man dying. Now, now you ain't gotta like him, what he stood for, his message, whatever. At the end of the day, whatever energy you put out is going to come back to your ass that's called karma okay so i don't want to say he he got what he deserved or anything like that but listen when you put negative energy out into the universe it's going to come back to you in whatever form whatever way the universe decides to bring that shit back to you. But the people who were celebrating his death, cheering, all of the vile stuff that I saw, I was like, yo, is this where we are as humans? Regardless if you like the man or not. I personally did not, okay? He, um, you know, he definitely had his way of delivering things that were distasteful and it rubbed a lot of women the wrong way okay understandable but it says something when we are just happy about someone dying and you know i can't hop on that train i'm sorry you know no one i don't want to hear another black man or woman dying regardless of if i like them or not you know death is final and it's not something um in my opinion that should be celebrated but nonetheless um you know his message is out there um the things that he believes and, and has said about black women a lot of the shit is true i'm just going to put it out there a lot of shit that he said was true uh, about black women and me being a black woman, you know, sometimes it's hard to hear the truth about yourself. And that's really not, um, that's for anyone. You don't have to be a black woman, you know, a person, um, is, is not usually eager to hear, uh, you know, the fuck shit about themselves. <laughs> let's just be real here let's be honest no one really likes to hear the bad shit about themselves so you know the thing with kevin samuels is he had some strong opinions about black women i did not agree with everything he said i didn't agree with probably 80 percent of what he said but some of the things that he said were true and it was proven with the callers who called into his show Okay, so, uh, you know, everyone is not your cup of tea, and you won't be everyone's cup of tea, and that's fine, you know, but the whole celebration of the man's death is just, just a little, it's a little vile for me, um, I wasn't with that, I don't think it's cool, you know, um, details are still coming in, uh, about his death, which I'm sure, you know, many people will have an opinion about cool, whatever, have your opinions, but, you know, just be mindful that that energy that you put out will come back to you as well, just as it came back to him. Now, that's not saying you're going to die or any shit like that, but just be mindful of the 
energy that you put out into the universe because it will come back to you, okay? Next topic I want to talk about is Dave Chappelle getting attacked on stage. Lord, how much, what is going on? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you saw the weapon that this person had. It was a makeshift gun slash knife or what the fuck ever. And he ran up on stage while Dave Chappelle was at the uh, Hollywood Bowl, I believe it is. And, you know, the crazy thing about this story is the Los Angeles uh, District Attorney's Office will not file felony charges against this man. Now, he attacked Dave Chappelle. He had a deadly weapon. Someone please explain to me how the fuck there will be no felony charges against this man woman man whatever uh, apparently he was a trans i don't even know i'm just like what what is really happening but he got that ass stomped out though <laughs> you can't run up on everybody and think that you're not going to get have some consequences okay arm all fucked up you know he looked like the martin uh he he looked like martin when he got fucked up in the in the boxing ring i mean i'm in that instance he got what he deserved because i'm like why are you going up on stage and and just bomb rushing people and think that you not gonna have no consequences baby this is not how life works okay there is a re there is an action no what's the saying there is a uh consequence for every action okay and and you know you got your ass whooped for that you know so uh ain't much i can uh, you know i i don't feel sorry for him in that regard um but i hope that this is not going to become a thing people just hopping running up on stage and attacking people just because you don't like what they say first of all why are you at the show you know Dave Chappelle is going, probably going to say something you don't like or agree with, especially if you are very sensitive about social issues, political, religion, whatever. If you are a sensitive ass motherfucker, don't go to a comedy show. How about that? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like now we're running into an issue with uh, free speech, you know, um, people trying to stop people from saying certain things. And it's just like, how did we get here? On one hand, people are vile as fuck on social media, but you go to a comedy show and you ready to jump on stage over a joke? I mean, come on. If you're that sensitive, stay the fuck home. <laughs> I'm just, you know, it's stay home. Don't go to a comedy show. Don't go to Dave Chappelle or Cat Williams or Kevin Hart. Don't go to any of their shows if you are a sensitive ass motherfucker. I mean, it's very simple. <sighs> you know, um, I just hope that this that this whole don't say this, don't say that is going to be a, a problem because y'all say some wild shit on these Twitter streets, okay? And and you're lucky that nobody can jump through a computer screen and snatch your ass up because some people need that as well. Uh, but not at a comedy show. I mean, come on now. The other topic that um, I have a lot here. Let's see, what am I going to get into? <laughs> There's a lot going on. Um, TurboTax is to pay customers $141 million in all 50 states, totaling. Um, and this is because they were preventing low-income people from using their free service. Now, I know this to be true because I tried to use TurboTax to file my taxes and the motherfuckers was like, it ain't free no more. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I make less than, you know, the, the required amount, 
you know, for the free service. And, and so they was, um, they was getting over on people. So now they got to pay a total of 141 million. So if you use TurboTax, um, to file, file your 2021 taxes, be sure to look out for your check because they owe you some money. Okay. Um, what else going on in this crazy ass current events? The Johnny Depp trial. I don't even know what's happening with that. <laughs> I tuned in for like five minutes one day and I'm just like, why is this even on TV? Why is this a thing? Uh, so it just, what I can say is that his ex-wife looks crazy as fuck. Um, and you know, Johnny Depp is one of my favorite actors. And so I hate to see the crazy shit going on, but you know, that's what happens when you are in Hollywood and you're dealing with all of the craziness, the drugs, the, the fast life, and you marry a crazy broad, like, you know? drugged out and believe it or not johnny depp is almost like 60 you know that he getting old so he like look bitch i ain't got time to be fucking around and arguing with you you know throwing shit getting high like who has time for that no one wants to be in a toxic ass relationship like life is too fucking short okay netflix and here we go with this bullshit. Netflix is said to introduce ads. If Netflix starts having ads, I'm definitely cutting that shit off. <laughs> okay? Ads have become the fucking worst thing on the internet. Like, these advertisers, like, know how to fuck up a vibe. Like, you know, you'd be watching a video on, um either YouTube or Facebook, and then this shit just cut off to a fucking ad, just like in the middle of, a, in the middle of a conversation, like it don't even give you like no, no entryway, it's just like, Arr! like, come on, man, let's, let's do better. So if Netflix, if you're listening, which are, you're probably not, we're not we're not dealing with the fucking ads like first you want to take away the passwords and the ability to share okay and now you want to talk about ads like nobody asked you to do that <laughs> nobody asked for that yeah so <clears throat> the craziness of the world that's going on right now causes for a little energy clearing, a little light of the the ganja because this is like, it's been a lot. There's a lot more going on with the whole um, Young Thug and Gunna situation that um, is apparently developing and uh, these these young men, I wish, really understood that you can't be in the streets and also in the music industry because they're watching you, they're giving you money, so they're going to make sure they know what you're doing with that money, okay? And, and, and it's... It, it, it's a sad thing. Apparently, I think uh, Gunna is the one who turned himself in, and it's just like, you know, we got to do better. We don't need no more black men in jail or or shot in the streets because of, you know, some fuck shit. And, you know, I don't know who all these people are. I'm just seeing the headlines, honestly. I, I don't know nothing about no Gunna or no Young Thug or none of them. But they are part of the community. And, um, you know, I don't really have much of, a, of an opinion on anything that they're doing. But, you know, it's just like, if, if you're going to be in the streets, be in the streets. If you're going to be 
try to you know be a celebrity then then be that but you can't be both <laughs> that's not how life works <laughs> unfortunately uh especially if you're black <laughs> let's get into the for the culture segment um there's a lot of new music that's been happening which is exciting so uh let's get into some music <laughs> method man with the meth lab season three is finally out i've been waiting for this joint two for a while and um there are definitely some bangers on here okay um one of the f one of my favorite joints on this uh record is uh the the song that he has with it's got krs1 let me see who's all on this joint. <clears throat> I think it's called um it's not act up. Damn, which song is it? Oh, live from the meth lab. Um yeah, this joint got Redman on it, KRS one, and Jojo Pellegrino. I don't know who the fuck that is, but um anyway. <laughs> uh the joint that I just played was a Switch Sides featuring Jada Kiss, Eddie I, and Fifth Power, which is um a very dope track. And you know, I'm I'm excited for all the new music coming, all the festivals that's happening. Um it's a lot going on in music and i'm like finally actually all year has been um you know good for music kendrick kendrick lamar dropping another album um nas is working on something else uh who else there's a lot there's a lot happening which is um exciting with khalifa and um uh who is he with oh. Wiz Khalifa just dropped another uh, a project that uh, I listened to last weekend, and it was really dope. Um, kind of like you know, smoke the music. It's got some uh, some dance tracks on there or whatnot. Um, but I'm I think I'm most excited for this new Kendrick album because you know just the build up to the release, and I believe that it's a double album. So the build up to the release, you know, has just been, he's been dropping some little jewels to let us know where his mindset is and where he's going with this album. And um, I think it's needed for inspiration, you know, for black people. Um, and he does that very well. He, he is definitely inspiring and infuses the music with, you know, um, black empowerment and self-love. And so that's really what I love about Kendrick. And it's always different and um, original, right? There's, you know, he's always in his own lane. And um, as a creative, I can appreciate that. It's sometimes it's hard to stay true to, you know, your thing, who you are, especially because what seems to be popular right what's what's fed to us as popular is everyone doing the same shit using the same sound you know looking the same so yeah ah 
that's exciting to talk about Kendrick. Um, but I also want to get into some TV movies because while I was down, okay, I was watching, first of all, The Batman. For those of you who said The Batman was the greatest movie of 2022, you fucking lied. <laughs> okay. Mm. I'm already over the whole Batman craze, like, Batman is so overrated, but the best movie? No. I fell asleep the first time trying to watch it. It's very slow, and, and uh, I don't know, the story kind of loses me. It seems a little cheesy, like, you know, it was just like, how many times can you tell the story of Batman? Like, we get it, okay? Like, Let's talk about some other superheroes. <laughs> Batman has like 40 million fucking movies and it's just like, why? Anyway, the Batman was not that great. I hated it. It was a terrible movie and I will not be watching the second one. Okay. Um, in which, why are they making a second one? No one, no, I can't say no one asked for that. Yeah, y'all asked for that whack shit and it's terrible. Um, <laughs> Ozark. If you have not finished Ozark, um, what are you doing? And second, I think I'm pretty happy with how Ozark ended. For four seasons, what can you ask for? I mean, how long could they really drag out the whole cartel? You know, it's just like after a while, it's just like, y'all are gonna die or you're gonna walk away from this and hiding somewhere you know what i mean like there's not many scenarios where this is a happy ending <laughs> so um but it was good the acting um was good i mean when you look at a show like ozark every episode you are fully engaged in the story and uh the writing is just phenomenal and uh the acting of course and you know the whole uh mood and and cinematography of it all was just uh that is a good show you know good show um did not leave us hanging like the end of game of thrones which was just like yeah motherfuckers what was that um and also speaking of game of thrones the um house of dragon listen the more they release the more i am like super excited because i'm like oh yeah it's about to be you know uh you know okay so here's the thing i'm really not trying to compare it to game of thrones i want to look at it from a different you know with a clean eye i don't want to compare i want it to be as good but i also know you know, I don't think they're the same writers either. So it's just like, you know, I don't know. I'm excited. Um, God, so much is coming back uh, this fall. The return of Westwood. If you have not watched Westwood, if you listen to anything that I recommend or that I talk about on my show, Westwood is it. All right. Go watch Westwood, get caught up. I think we are heading into season four, right? Watch the first three seasons, which reminds me that I'm going to, and I know y'all see me geeking out, okay? <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm gonna go and catch up on seasons one through three and get ready for that because that is coming back. And um, I think that's all I had. That's all I had on my list today. It has been, uh, like I said, a crazy week. And so now it is uh, tarot time. And we're going to see. I actually should have already had this uh, pulled, but we just want to do a quick little shuffle. But uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in with me today. Oh, whoa, that came out quick. 
three of pentacles. Three of pentacles. All right, let's see what um this card represents here. So the suit of pentacles represents the element of earth. Um, which key meanings are material things, finances, health, and sensuality. And speaking of Earth, we are in Taurus season. Um, Mercury is going retrograde. And um, yeah, it's retrograde in Gemini, which Gemini is an air sign. So three of pentacles. <clears throat> the three of pentacles is all about rewarding work it is a sign that you are ready to tackle important projects and make quick progress however it is also a symbol of teamwork and collaboration which means that the best way to achieve your goals is to work with others so wow this speaks a lot to fucking getting along with people and not being an asshole <laughs> like running up on stage and trying to stab someone because you don't like what they're expressing um wow that's a good card to kind of leave off of especially heading into mercury retrograde which you know it's not it's not a bad thing all the time but um because of today's crazy society that we live in with everything so fast paced all the time and really never stopping to go with the flow that's really not the vibe of america um mer you know communication with others and uh the, you know all the different um energies that you got to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis things can get lost in translation as far as you know uh understanding each other's perspectives or having productive conversations so yeah mercury retrograde allows us the time to just kind of um take a step back review um have some introspection before we make big decisions um also being patient with others and ourselves during this time as shit may get a little muddled technology may be a little wonky or you know whatever basically having patience with people <laughs> okay and um not allowing ourselves to stress out about what we can't control um, also, it is Mental Health Awareness Month, which um, I did want to mention because, you know, we're still going through a lot as a society and 40% of adults suffer with some form of mental health, right? And stress is uh, pretty much the number one thing that um, people say that they struggle with, which with stress creates a lot of uh, mental anguish and um, other issues, other health issues. And stress also keeps your immune system weak, right? So the more stress that uh, you have in your life, the more susceptible you are to, um, for instance, catching COVID or, you know, having other health issues like stomach problems and um, digestion problems, aches and pains and things like that. And so, you know, that's why we stretch and work out our bodies to help process all of the day-to-day -day things that we have to uh, experience mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So in that sense, um, I will leave some mental health resources in the description of the episode and just, um, you know, check them out. Maybe you can find a good therapist or find, you know, some help to deal with whatever you may be experiencing in your life. And so I believe that is it. Um, I want to go out to this joint right here by ASAP Rocky because, you know, I love me a little ASAP. 
uh him and rihanna are so cute <laughs> so um he dropped a, a dope little video that kind of touches on their relationship and their you know uh their their ghetto love story so peace and love have a wonderful weekend and um be a good person <laughs> peace